Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, the 19th of September. Today's topic is the K-12 Online Conference 2015. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, and Tammy Moore. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Our special guests today are the K-12 Online Conference organizers. I'm going to turn the mic over to Susan, who's going to then answer the newbie question after she tells us a bit more in general about, well, the question is, what is the K-12 online conference? So I'll turn the mic over to you, Susan. OK. The, it's the 10th year that the K-12 online conference is happening. And I have to say, I first participated in 2006, the first year. In fact, I was in Prince Edward Island and begged and borrowed from somebody so that I could get near uh, Wi-Fi in order to listen. Uh, it's an online virtual asynchronous conference. That means that you don't have to be at a certain time, at a certain place to be, take part in the conference. It's all online, although the sessions are, are posted on a certain day. You can listen to them anytime. We start each year with an opening keynote to set the stage this year on Monday, October 12th. This session, like all the others, is a recorded presentation, pre-recorded. So it's not just a talking head. It has a lot more interest than that. It is posted within a blog. And I would encourage you to watch and share your comments. Starting the following week, uh, there will be four sessions posted each weekday morning in each of two weeks. Presentations are limited, with the exception of keynotes, to 20 minutes. Each strand has its own keynote speaker. The presentations are long enough to get some great information, but short enough to fit into the life of a busy teacher. The great thing is you can watch them any time and even go back and see presentations from previous years. Uh, Proper dress is not required. You can watch in your pajamas. That's up to you. Each year, we try to have presentations for everyone, from people just starting to use technology in their teaching and learning, to those who are old hands looking for new ways to teach and learn. So we're looking forward to you learning more about the conference as you participate. We're going to take just a couple of minutes here to show you our wonderful promo video for the conference this year. I think it will help uh, you feel our excitement about the conference and give you a quick overview of that. So I'm going to start the web tour. And if any of you have a problem viewing that, we'll drop the link for the video in the chat, and you can watch it there. Thank you. 
Uh, the flyer can found, be found in a couple of places. One, if you just check the link here, the bit.ly link, you can download the flyer, spread the word, send it by uh, email to your colleagues, post a version in your staff room, any way to get the news out. We really appreciate it. And of course, you can follow the Twitter link, K12 Online 15. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Susan. Um, this is Wes Fryer. I'm tuning in from Denver, Colorado today. And I'm so excited to be a part of this 10th K-12 Online Conference. I know for many of us, K-12 Online has been one of, if not the most transformational influence on our professional growth and learning when it comes to digital technologies. This year, our theme is Virtually Unstoppable. And each year of the conference, we have an overarching theme, but we also have four different strands. And <clears throat> K-12 Online has continued to iterate and evolve over the years, but it's been consistent in presenting or having the opportunity to have presenters share uh, approximately 40 presentations over a two-week period. And it really is an infusion of amazing innovation and opportunities to connect uh, not just during the conference, but after the conference as well. So I want to begin today by thanking our organizers. K-12 Online is a completely volunteer event. There are not any uh, vendors involved. We don't have any payments or anything like that going on. This is really a work of love and passion. And so in our Maker Ed strand, and we'll be hearing from each of these organizers um, with, in more detail about their strands, we have Karen Fassenpar. And as a, as a STEM teacher and someone loving STEM, just can't wait for more ideas relating to Maker Ed, which I think last year might have been our first year to have a specific Maker Ed strain. No, it's been two years. We've had we've, this is the third year for that. Um, stories of connection. Susan and Gelder is going to or in is organizing that strand, and of course we all remember stories, perhaps better than anything. And um, the, the connections is a quick example. Uh, last year I just loved. Um, ben, um, six, six Second Stories for Learning, um, and um, the uh, I've never used Vine before, and so um, uh, Ben Wilkoff is in Denver, Colorado, and I'm actually getting to see Ben today briefly, and you know that was just one of many presentations last year, so just can't wait for that strand. Overcoming Obstacles is being headed up this year uh, by Leslie. Uh, Prail Keen and uh, overcoming obstacles always presents great opportunities to not not only talk at the classroom level but also at the school level, the district level. There's just a variety of different obstacles as we seek to be innovative and creative. Um, we're excited that Carol. Bruce is organizing beyond the core, art, and more. There are so many different ways that the creative arts um, are and can be brought into the curriculum in all content areas, not just when we think about going to art and going to music class. Um, and then, of course, we have to say a huge thank you to Peggy George, who has been an organizer with us for many years. And uh, this team is uh, just fantastic. And um, Want to want to just reach out to them and encourage you to reach out to them via Twitter and other ways um, as we have the conference and afterwards to say thanks. So we are going to be hearing a lot more about our individual strand keynoters, and you can see their names listed here. I actually want to uh, just give time for our strand organizers who have worked most closely with all of them here in a little bit to tell us more details about what their strand will involve, a little bit about their keynote speaker. Um, each of our strands has 10 presentations, and the first week of the conference starts out with our first two strands, Maker Ed and Stories of Connection. And so I saw in our initial survey, we have about 50% of those in today's call who have not participated in the conference before. So you can expect to have generally four presentations each day, and then you'll have two for each strand. And sometimes that changes a little bit depending upon um, you know, things that have happened with the conference. But the keynoters that will start off on Monday definitely
definitely are folks not to miss. And in the second week, which will start October 26th, uh, as you can see, we'll be hearing from Scott McLeod and from Karen Bosch. Um, it, but again, I'll, I'll uh, defer to our organizers here in just a minute, our strand organizers, to uh, talk a little bit more in detail. I want to tell you just briefly about our pre-conference keynote, because each year we kick off the conference with one presentation. Once the regular conference starts, it really is a a flood of, of awesome content, four presentations per day, but that keeps up, you know, for two weeks. But the first week, starting on October 12th, we just have one presentation, and we're so excited that Don Wetrick and his innovation class students have agreed to share this year's keynote. So if you're not familiar with Don, you definitely want to follow him on Twitter and check out his book. His book is called Pure Genius, Building a Culture of Innovation. I have seen Don most recently on some Periscope uh, presentations and Ed, and Ed chats or Twitter chats that he's done on uh, on Twitter, and then Periscope when he's been the the facilitator or leader, and he is just chock full of fantastic ideas, um, lessons learned. He traveled to Africa this summer. I kept up a little bit with him uh, through Twitter. And one of the most exciting things for me in K-12 online presentations is whenever we bring student voices in and the student perspective. And we have iterated around different things. We've even had entire strands in the past um, on student voices. What we've been doing the last two years is really encouraging presenters as they can to bring their students into their their presentation in some way. And so I know that we'll have some of that with Don's presentation, and it just really is going to be fantastic. Um, let me also mention, as you may have noticed, we've got our hashtag there in the corner, and we'll talk more about involvement. But please feel free and, and do use the K-12 Online 15 hashtag uh, to share anything related to the conference, letting more people know about it, um, and also giving us a chance to amplify your voice and encourage more folks to be able to connect with you. So overall, this year for the conference, remember that it is free. The price is right. This is literally the best professional development I think you could ever find that you'll never pay for. And uh, as Susan had written or put into, I think, one of our marketing items earlier, that this is the watch it at your leisure conference because our presentations are videos that you can download your um, iOS device or you can watch on YouTube on a mobile device or, or laptop or wherever you want. And you can look forward to each day of the main conference having four new presentations. All of those are archived now on YouTube and also on iTunes U. And so it's very challenging to keep up with the, the quantity of content. And, and, and so this is a great source of continuing professional development, not just during the actual conference, but um, later as well. So I think I'd like to now pass the mic off. And what we're going to have is going to be an app share. And I think that Peggy is going to take it away. And yes, I am. And we thought it might be helpful for you, especially if you're new to the conference, but even if you're not, to take you on a quick tour of our site so you can see the best places to find things. Of course, you can always go back to our live binder when the conference begins or even before. And all of these links are included in our live binder today. So I'm going to start application sharing. and take you to the site and hope that you are seeing this now. And um, this is the home page for our conference. And you, you, it, you, I love all the beautiful colors. It's such a colorful site now. And uh, we've cleaned up the organization a lot this year. So I think it'll be much easier for you to find things. So across the top here, you'll see the tabs for every single year going all the way back to the beginning. Under the 2015 tab, you'll find the schedule. That is going to be the most important thing for you to know where to find and even to bookmark. Because on that site, 
on that page, every presentation is listed by day. And each day, once the presentation is live, it will be hyperlinked. So if you don't see a hyperlink, that means that presentation hasn't gone live yet. But once you see the hyperlink, you can click on it and you can go straight to the recording. In all of the rest of these years, you'll also find the schedule, which has all of the presentations hyperlinked. But then you'll find some separate um, links. You, if you want to just go to the keynote for each of these years, you can click on that link and go to it. There's one under every one of those tabs. And each year, we had different themes. So for example, last year, Stories for Learning, games and gamification, passion-driven learning, STEAM, and then we even had teasers. And each year, there usually are a few teasers about upcoming sessions. So all of those things are available for you under that tab. Other things you should know about, our flyer is right there. And I have that <coughs> link open. And this is, this is what you'll. Uh, actually, I don't have that link open. I want to show you that one next. But if you click on that link, it will take you to the downloadable flyer. And we hope you'll do that and share that URL with people so they'll get excited about the conference and what's upcoming and will go to the website. We also have a section on professional development credit. And a little bit later on in this presentation today, we'll be sharing more about how you can get involved in earning professional development credit, and also ways that you can share the conference with others. Um, and there's a, a tab here just for presenters. So if you have any questions about what you need to do to submit your videos or need help, um, you will get that from that tab. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit because I want to show you that we have an email list that you can subscribe to so you can get all of our latest updates. We also have a YouTube channel. And if you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be able to see all of our videos that have been uploaded. We have playlists for every year. And we have an iTunes U channel collection, I guess I should say, for all of the videos. So you can even watch it on your mobile device. So with that, um, I'm going to just take us back to um, our slides and stop the sharing and <clears throat> tell you how you can find our iTunes U collection. This is a, this is a great way to watch the videos, uh, both on iTunes U and YouTube, because you can watch those on mobile devices. So that's wonderful that you can take it with you wherever you go, whether you're exercising or driving in your car or whatever. And you can listen if you don't want to watch the video. But that is the link, and we'll put that link in the chat um, directly for you, and it's also in our live binder. So now it's time for our Maker Ed Strand introduction. Great, Great. thanks, Peggy. Um, this is Karen Fassenpower, and I'm the convener for the Maker Ed Strand this year. And I am very excited about this strand and excited about Maker Ed in general. Um, I do a Kids Maker Day locally every year, and I just did. I just we just did it last Saturday, and just had a lot of fun. So this year in the Strand, we have um, great presentations. Some of them are on digital making, so things like coding, web making, video. Um, but some of them are about more physical making, um, circuitry, robotics, that kind of thing, um, and even writing. Um, we have a great lineup of speakers for this year. And some of the sessions will um, include one on e-textiles, one on game jams, cardboard challenges, um, digital scrapbooking, and we'll really have a variety of classroom maker activities um, suitable for people who are brand new beginners to the whole maker area um, to, to experts. Um, so I am just super excited. This will be from the 19th to the 23rd. And one of our 
presenters and team members, Harrison McCoy is with us here today, and I want to give him a minute to talk about his session. Um, Harrison has presented for K-12 online in the past, and he's presenting again this year, and he's also um, doing some fabulous work um, helping us out with um, the marketing this year. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Harrison to talk for a minute about his session. Thanks, Karen. It's, uh, this is going really well. This is one of my first experiences with the webinar, and, and I'm kind of excited to be here. Uh, my presentation, I honestly think that the, uh, the best part of it is going to be the student voices that are involved. Uh, I teach ninth grade, uh, but I began working with robotics in junior high school with eighth graders a couple of years ago. And uh, we also hope to have an elementary angle because one of the things that my eighth graders did last year was a, a community service trip to an elementary school where they were able to turn that school onto robotics. And now that school has a robotics competitive team. So we're hoping to have some of those elementary kids' uh, voices represented as well. My experience in the presentation is going to focus on the LEGO Mindstorm EV3 robots. And um, they're just a ton of fun. and. Uh, they're not as difficult as, as some people might think that they might be. Uh, I got into it with no experience whatsoever, and, and honestly, the kids taught me a lot about it when I first started. So I'm excited about the presentation this year. That's great. Thanks so much, Harrison, for all the work you're doing for the conference as well. And we look forward to your presentation and all the others. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Susan to talk about the Stories of Connection strand. I'm a strong believer in story and uh, as a way of communicating, but as a, a way of um, making ideas really understood. I'm thrilled this year to have Alan Levine as the keynote for the Stories of Connection Strand. I know that he has been collecting stories from a variety of people who uh, want to talk about what connection has done for them. When I talk about connection, I'm talking not only about person to person or classroom to classroom, but it could be connecting with ideas, connecting with uh, professionals, connecting in a whole variety of ways. So what's exciting this year is we have speakers uh, from the US, from Egypt, from Australia, and South Africa. So the world is getting smaller as we connect a variety of uh, sessions, including global educators, uh, connecting students and teaching through the world, through innovative technologies, and closer to home, the power of the PLN in your own backyard. We have uh, someone speaking on social annotations and online collaborative reading, of making those very strong connections to people through uh, curriculum. And um, what can social media aggregation contribute to advocating for education? There's, uh, that's just a few of the sessions. It looks like it's going to be a very exciting uh, strand. And like uh, the strand on Makerspace, it will be in that first week from the 19th to the 23rd of October. And I will turn it now over to I think it's Leslie next. Leslie, can you take the mic? Click on the talk. It looks like Leslie is giving it a try. We'll see if she can come in here. She was joining us a little bit late because of other Saturday, other Saturday commitments. So. Go ahead, Leslie. Hi, are we good now? Yep, you're good now. Go ahead. OK, perfect. I was trying to say that this is my first year as a uh, stream convener, but not my first year as a presenter. And I'm so excited to lead Overcoming Obstacles. Uh, we have an awesome, awesome, and I may be a little biased because I get to work with him on a daily basis, but keynote in Scott McLeod, who I think we all know is about pushing us to solve problems all the time, to think bigger, and to do bigger things. So his keynote is 
really um, one that I'm pumped about because it's all about moving from um, the yes but to why not and how can we. And so that will, I know, be challenging to our thought process and will be really exciting for us to think about. We have some great, great presenters for overcoming obstacles. Um, everything from addressing new teachers, pre-service teachers, to um, some making things like with robots, we're pulling in a little STEM. Um, meeting with parents and students is another one that I'm excited to um, listen to this year. Not that I'm not excited for all of them, but super, super excited to all these various topics where we're really focused in on um, solving problems and really overcoming those obstacles and not just complaining, but about taking action. So that will take place during week two of the conference, which starts uh, Monday, October 26th. So I will flip to Carol. And uh, I'm Carol. Oh. Yep, you're on, Carol. You're good. We can hear you. Cool. I think you may need to click the mic again, though. You may have clicked off. Okay, am I on now? Am I on now? You are on now, live for the okay, world. Okay, fabulous. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so I'm really excited about this strand, of course. Um, I, I love K-12 online conference. It, it, it is really the reason why I got into all of this. Um, it was one of my first presentings, and I just want to tell other people but this is an amazing conference, and this strand has just a plethora of people. We have art, art teachers, we have artists, we have musicians, we have people that were, got into the arts later and realized that, that they needed to put arts into their classroom. We have a web literacy mapping and creative uh, persuasive media. Um, we have a, an art teacher that's talking about building a legacy for uh, children in their art. Um, we have someone putting up the worst PowerPoint ever and showing the pitfalls and how to make one that's creative. Um, we have connecting creativity, and we have some two types of musicians that are coming in, one from the band perspective and one from the general music perspective. And he is actually from Korea. And so I'm very excited. So I'm going to move it over to Karen, and she is going to talk a little bit about, I hope I can get, to, get her over there, talk about her keynote, because I am so excited about her keynote. So here is, here's Karen. Am I doing that right? Do I get over to her? I am not positive if Karen Bosch is with us today live. Oh, I don't okay. Think, I don't think she is, so just yeah, tell, okay. tell okay. us a little bit about what to expect. And I, I think, yeah, there, there you go. go. You click your mic. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Karen does amazing digital uh, sketch notes for learning. And she has shown how using sketch notes really improves memory and includes student understanding. And if you've ever seen her stuff, it's, it's absolutely beautiful and how she coordinates the whole thing together. So I am super excited about how, uh, how she does this, and she does it with like kindergarten through eighth grade. She does it with really young students. I mean, first graders are doing this. No, so you know I'm what? To I, I think that she is, and but she's logged in as Carly B. And right. yeah, so let's make sure. Yep, yeah, you've got the mic, Karen Bosch. So if you okay. if you can click the talk button there in the top upper left corner, let's see if we can hear you live, and and you can tell us a little bit. We didn't have a chance to check mics with you earlier, but give that a shot. Go ahead. Hi, can you, can you hear me? We can. We can hear you. Oh, oh. well, I was, I was just kind of eavesdropping on this while I was multitasking and doing some other things. I wasn't expecting to talk, but if you can hear me, I can say a few things. Um, I'm really excited about doing this. I have been personally doing sketch notes for myself for a little over two years, and I've really found that the process has transformed um, the way I listen. And just the way I learn, I do it a lot, um, largely in church with sermons. And you know, it takes you know time that sometimes can be kind of boring, and you know, you're kind of detached, and just has really 
um, change that listening process to me to something that's creative and fun and really helps me to remember what I'm listening to. And so I've been having a lot of fun working with that with students over the past couple years, um, doing sketch notes from um, watching videos, from um, working off of textbooks. Um, and uh, it's just been a very interesting process. And I just recently completed a iTunes U course that is on doing sketch notes that can be used either for you as a teacher or with your class, with your entire class. And it kind of takes you through everything you could need to know, including a lot of tutorials. So I'm really looking forward to sharing with you specifically from the perspective of um, using sketch notes with your students um, is kind of what my theme will be. Fantastic. Well, uh, Carol, anything else as far as your strand that you'd like to share? Um, no, I'm fine. Okay, well, I think we're going to pass it now to Karen to uh, fasten par to talk a little bit about professional development. Great, thanks. I am so excited about all these strands. Um, so K-12 Online is a, is a great professional development opportunity. And I've worked in both formal and informal professional development for a lot of years. And I, I've, particularly in the last five or six years, really been looking for different models of professional development and ways to make it um, more individualized and more meaningful to individual people instead of the sort of traditional stand and deliver um, less participative format. And I think K-12 Online is just a great way to do that. So people use K-12 Online videos both for formal and for informal professional development. Um, it could be used in face-to-face -face sessions. I know people have used it in staff meetings or even um, come up with a whole workshop around it. I would love to take something like that sketchnote presentation and use that as a launch for a PD session and then really have the rest be hands on time actually doing it. Um, with groups or individually, it's, it's, it can be used. Um, and we, the K-12 online conference does issue certificates. Um, for participation, there's a form on the website and there's a, there's a tab on the website where you can get all this information about professional development. Um, so if a certificate is helpful for you, we, we will um, issue that. And then you just have to go to your district to find out if they'll accept that certificate for continuing ed units or sort of what the local rules are on, on what you have to do for that. But a number of people um, have used the conference sessions for formal credit, which I think is, is exciting. Um, some districts have even used K-12 online sessions um, not only for continuing ed credits, but also for teachers to earn technology um, tools for their classroom. So we do have a form on the website where you can share how you use the K-12 online videos in professional development. And I, we always love to hear stories of how people are using it, and, and, and I think it inspires other people to think of that. So. Um, lots of creative ways to use the conference videos. And I will also say all of the conference videos are, uh, are open licensed under the Creative Commons license. So you can even take those videos and remix them or um, build your own sort of video around it, um, which I think is also um, a, a fun opportunity. So I'm going to pass it on to Wes now to talk about um, how you can get involved in the conference. Well, thanks, Karen, and thanks to all of our strand organizers. Um, you know, things have evolved and continue to morph and change with respect to digital learning and online collaboration since the K-12 online conference started 10 years ago in 2006. Um, Twitter really hadn't taken off the way it has now. Twitter chats, uh, you know, the explosion of YouTube, lots and lots of things. But sharing the K-12 online conference personally with teachers and other educators, librarians, administrators that we work with really is the best way to let people know. I mean, there are so many different sources of online information and, and, and even online professional development. And so we really encourage you to tell others, as Peggy had just put into the chat and, and Karen was talking about, sharing those stories of how K-12 has, has affected you, uh, the ways in, in which you've grown and things that you've learned. Um, 
the hashtag is K12Online15, and so if you'll use that on Twitter, um, this year we'll probably be putting together some lists of presenters via, via Twitter and you know, really encouraging folks who are involved in existing Twitter chats. I know we have one in Oklahoma on Sunday nights, and I drop into different ones periodically. Uh, let people know, and folks who are early adapter innovators you know, in school are folks who really thrive on the learning and the connections that K-12 online fuels. So um, certainly we want you to participate by viewing presentations um, that are linked on our website, embedded from YouTube on our website, and that are also on iTunes U. And then when you view a presentation, please share comments and reflections. When the conference started back in 2006, you know, blog comments were really the main way we interacted with each other online um, as teachers. We, you know, we just we didn't have Pinterest. We, you know, Facebook hadn't taken off and, and Twitter. So we still have the opportunity to leave comments directly on the blog, um, but directly reaching out to presenters, um, almost all, if not all, of our presenters each year. There's probably a few that aren't, but most um, are on Twitter. There's also Google+, Plus. there's also Facebook. Uh, and so K-12 Online has always been, for me, such a different conference because of this personal connection to presenters and this opportunity to ask questions, get answers, and then continue learning. There are multiple folks who I just continue to learn alongside because I am connected to them. And as Carol just put into the chat, comments are so important, um, especially on blogs now. It's just, it's kind of rare. It, it depends. I mean, I guess there's some blogs maybe that just get tons of comments comments still, but in general, you know, there's so many more lurkers out there than there are folks that are, that are leaving a comment. So that's really a great way to say thank you to a presenter. It, it takes a lot of time to put together one of these presentations, and so by leaving a comment on the blog, by commenting on the YouTube video, which you can, uh, reaching out on Twitter, one of the nice things about posting on the blog or on the actual video on YouTube is that that comment is then archived sort of in time with their presentation. And so there's an even greater likelihood um, that that presenter will see it and others will see it as well and we can get some of those conversations going. So these are all ways to get involved. There's also other ways we didn't mention. Um, Susan Van Gelder mentioned in the, in the chat here a second ago a LAN party, uh, which we've had a few of. And you know what? I've wanted to do one of these every year, and I just haven't. And I think this year I'm going to be pushed over the edge. What is a LAN party? It's when you invite some folks over to your house on, on your local area network and together you, you know, watch one or more videos or you might watch different ones and then you come together and share and it creates immediacy for, for us and, and for those that we work with and invite to, to watch videos, but then also you know, discuss them and provide feedback. And then you know, in some cases people have recorded you know, some, some little video reflections, but even just sending some tweets or some comments, all of those are great ideas. And just like Karen said, we want you to share the ways you are using the conference. We have definitely had a number of pre-service teacher educators over the years and continue to use these videos during different units of instruction. Those Creative Commons licenses that Karen mentioned make it great that you can include you know, pieces or the entire video within lessons that you do. And our creativity continues to be fueled by the creativity and the innovation of others. So um, it's, it, it's why K-12, I think, continues to be such an important and vibrant part of, of learning for many folks. But there's just tons of educators who have never heard of it before and haven't participated. So your personal invitation to those that you work with and those you know is really critical. So um, and we did also have a link, and maybe Karen can drop, or Peggy can drop it in again, or I'll try uh, to the badge link. We have a badge this year, which you can, with a couple clicks and authorizations, add in the corner of your um, Twitter uh, avatar or, or icon that you use, and then you can also copy and, and save that badge to put it on your website and your blog to further amplify it. So we are going to now switch into a Q&A time, and I don't know how many questions were 
were posed, but feel free to post those. I'm going to pass it to Lori, and we'll just kind of uh, answer some questions, and we might also have some time for, for people to share some stories about how K-12 online has been transformative. Wes, the only question I saw was, is there a fee for the conference? And the answer to that is no, there is no fee, but no one else posted a question, so we might then switch to stories. Sure, okay. Well, and if anybody has a, has a question that's come up you'd like to ask, um, please do. And uh, since we've got all our organizers, we may just kind of go around the horn and let people you know, share a quick story about how, how K-12 has been transformational. Um, we also don't have a registration requirement. You know, the, the Global Education Conference um, has just, I think, wrapped up and different conferences take different approaches. We're, we're very much, um, you know, I don't know, we, having the content out there, releasing it, and, and really not having very many restrictions at all on, on how people you know, have to use it or, or what people have to do in order to get it. So yeah, we're open source, exactly, Susan. Um, I'm going to share a quick story and then I'm going to pass it off to, uh, maybe we can just go in the same order that we started as far as our strands. So I'll, I'll pass it off to um, Karen to tell a quick story. Uh, you know, mine is going to be a mobile learning story. K-12 online because of iPods and the idea that we can download content to our device and then take it with us. I have had innumerable commutes to school and you know trips and things where I have been listening and ha have a chance to listen to part of a presentation, pause it, and then pick it up again. Um, I know I really got into a lot of um, mobile learning tools for audio recording and things like that um, thanks to, uh, gosh, and now I'm going to uh, forget that somebody can help me with, with names, Liz Kolb. Liz Kolb did some great presentations a number of years ago about, you know, using tools that let students use their cell phones and record. And so, um, you know, that the idea of PD on demand as wherever you go, but then also just this asynchronous, the power of pause and then play again, going on a walk around the house, you know, being on a trip. Um, it's just been huge. So Karen, you want to share a quick story and we'll just pass it down the, the organizer line again unless, unless we've got some other questions that come up. Sure. Um, so two quick things. One is just my experience, I think it's been three years ago, as a K-12 online presenter was just a great experience. And I would encourage people, um, even if you don't present a lot or you've never done anything like this, um, think about think about presenting next year. I found it was just a great um, learning experience and a fun way to be able to try out some new techniques and new ideas in a really friendly environment. Um, and the other thing we were talking about in the chat is just um, the K-12 online sessions as source material for other things that you're doing, particularly because they are open licensed. So I've used snippets of K-12 online sessions in um, face to face presentations I've done at conferences and I'm always looking for good um, good video source that I can use in other videos I'm doing or remixes or whatever and K12 online just has such an incredible library of, of 10 years worth of just phenomenal um, uh, material so that's another idea and I will pass it over to Susan. Actually, before we go to Susan, uh, Paula Noggle raised her hand, so let's go to Paula and then we'll go to Susan. Paula, go ahead. Hi, Wes. Thank you. And the awesome K-12 online conference organizers. Um, I got involved in this, I think it was 2010. Um, my um, Skype buddy class with Jan Wells in Kansas and my class in Louisiana we did our presentation on how um, we got connected and how we started doing the projects we were doing to connect our classrooms. And the funny thing was, in making the video, I learned so much <laughs> because it was quite a, it was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. So, you know, with um, Jan being in Kansas and me being in Louisiana, we had to figure out storage um, sites to use and things like that. And thank goodness Peggy George was there to help us uh, along the way. But it is really an awesome learning experience for not only the people who uh, watch the, the videos, but the people who make the videos. 
um, it really helps you reflect on what you're doing and things like that. And that becomes part of the archive, which is really cool. So, but I just wanted to share that I learned so much. And last year I did help with convening, but I don't think I did such a hot job on that because I have a lot more to learn about being a convener. But it was fun to be involved. And I would strongly suggest that you do the best you can with tweeting it out, blogging about it, putting it on Facebook, and helping people learn about this awesome, awesome online conference. Thank you, Paula. And you know that is so true. We are all on journeys of learning and learning new tools and skills. K-12, at whatever point you jump in, provides an opportunity to augment and support your journey. And nothing you know, turbocharges your journey of learning like presenting. And I'm reminded of how, I guess, at the beginning of motion pictures, they filmed, you know, stage plays and didn't move outside. And, you know, we, we started in 2006 from David Warlick learning about how we can go outside and record and put videos together. But, you know, the size of videos and the ways we compress them and the ways we share them on cloud services to each other and all this, it's just so, so many different pieces that are technical. But, you know, that personal piece is so powerful. Powerful, and there's just lots of people in the room today, you know, and that continue to be part of our community. That uh, without this this conference and without this opportunity, you know, this is a catalyst for for connection. So let me toss it over to Susan. Susan, you want to share a quick story of K-12 transformation in your life? Well, I'll share a couple. One, it goes back to the first conference, and I think it's always about putting oneself out of one's comfort zone. The very first conference, there was something called, uh, oh, it was 24 hours, uh, um, the light goes out or something like that. And people had arranged a 24-hour chat. As, that night, people could, as night falls, I think. As night falls, that's right. And it, it, was, it was audio, but no video at the time. And I offered to be a, um, a host for that. and. I always say, coming from a mother who, you know, if a radio had more than on off in volume, that was a challenge. I've come a long way, but I still feel the need to put myself um, out of that comfort zone because that's where we learn. And I think, Paula, your description of um, doing a presentation, when we put ourselves out there and learn and risk and take those chances, we're understanding what our students are doing and getting a little bit more to walking in their shoes. And I think that's an important part of what we do with the conference, what we do as presenters, and frankly, what we do as uh, conveners. Um, every year, it's new technology, how to get this whole thing together. So those are my two little stories. Awesome, thanks. And I know we're getting close to the top of the hour, but I think we do hopefully still have time real quick. We'll go to Leslie, and then we'll go to Carol to share a quick story. Leslie, you want to share a little bit about your your journey with K-12? Well, I'm not, I'm not seeing her. Maybe she dropped, She may have had to drop out, actually. I think she did. So Carol, you're on. You want to you wanna grab the mic and uh, share a quick um, story? Yes. Um, my whole thing, my first one I did, someone, um, Carol Verotny said, let's put a video together. So we did one together. And then I began to see that having my students part of it was really the catalyst. Um, the next two years, I had um, students that videotaped. And well, I did the videotaping, and they did the talking. And I learned so much. Here I have them in class, you know, and I was a music teacher, so I had them for five, six years. I didn't know some of the stories. I learned more about my students doing the videos and doing this about how they got involved in the technology and letting them soar at the K-12 online conference. I got, I got projects that I never would have gotten if it wasn't for this conference. So, and they began to watch K-12. So yeah. um, awesome. that, that's where I, yeah. And that, so. that side of, of student voice, empowering students, empowering each other, it's just a continuing theme that, that runs through the conference. So Lori mentioned in chat, we do have a question. Lori, do you want to uh, share that one? And then we'll field it. Sure. And it looks like uh, Karen wanted to take this, and she also suggested US. But I'll ask the question. The participants need to secure copyright permission to use your previously published conference sessions. Great question, and I'm glad people are thinking about copyright. Um, so in recent years, the K-12 online sessions have all been Creative Commons licensed.
licensed. And Creative Commons is what's known as an open license um, that allows, um, in this case, it's it's the Creative Commons attribution license. So it allows anyone to reuse, remix, or redistribute the content without getting permission. Because in, in essence, the, um, the author of the work has said in advance, anybody can use this how they want. The requirement with that license is that you do um, give attribution, so just say where the, where the source material came from. And I think that's just a huge, huge um, strength of our conference. Um, is that ability to be able to use, um, reuse and remix and redistribute these materials. And we do um, a lot of work with our presenters making sure that um, all their material when they do that is either um, their own original material that they're willing to open license or that it's material that's otherwise been open licensed. Um, for that use. And so you can look for the license on the um, presentations, but like I said, the last couple of years, it's all CC BY. And I'm not sure, Wes, um, and I think we had a different Creative Commons license before that, and I'm not sure if the original sessions, I'm not even sure Creative Commons was around then. Actually, I think they just, yeah, they were just getting we, started. Yeah, we tried, so. and I think we used a CC BY, you know, um, not a CC, what's the one that says no remix? Um, share, share alike. Share alike. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. actually, you know, CC BY is just so much more open and flexible in terms of clarifying, you know, because even the question of like this is a for money course that students are paying, you know, can we do this? CC BY just makes it real clear, give credit to the creator, and then, you, you know, utilize it, remix it as you want. So we have, I think always tried to integrate those, but it was three or four years ago that we became explicit CC BY and then, you know, really tried to talk with, with our presenters about it. And that's another level of, of education and advocacy that the conference has. Sometimes I think people have been introduced possibly for the first time to Creative Commons, you know, through the conference. So I think we got about two minutes left till the top of the hour, and what we'd like to do now is pass the mic back to Peggy, who is going to tell us a little bit about some other upcoming opportunities to learn and connect, and then take us out. Thank you so much to all of the uh, conveners for the conference for sharing this great preview. And I know that people are going to be very excited to participate now that they know even more about it. Just to wrap things up, I want to remind everyone that Connected Educator Month is coming for the whole month of October. And you should go to connecteducators.org. That link is in our live binder. There are incredible opportunities to connect with other people, watch presentations, all kinds of things all month long. And they update that schedule all the time. You can participate and contribute to that month. So get signed up, go to that link and see what's coming. I also want to invite all of you back to our future shows. Next week on Classroom 2O Live, we're going to be featuring eCyber Mission. If you haven't heard of that, you want to come back and join us for that. On October 3rd, we're going to be featuring Buncee. I know many of you are using it already, and we would love to have you come and join us and share your stories. October 10th, we're going to feature Minecraft EDU. October 17th, we have the amazing Jennifer Garcia joining us, and she's going to do some digital storytelling with iPads using Doink and green screen. Then October 24th, no show for us, because I know many of you will be going to the Den Fall Virtual Conference. And I know that's where I'm going to be. So we hope you'll tune into that. And then on October 31st, we're going to have our next featured teacher, who will be Marcy Hebert. And she's going to be sharing about maker spaces. So lots of great things coming up. And we definitely hope you'll come back and join us. And now, um, one last word about the Fall Virtual Conference. I did include a slide for this here and put the link in the live binder. This is about the Fall Virtual Conference. Get registered um, on Discovery Ed so that you will have the links to join in the sessions that day. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Lori to finish up. Thanks, Peggy, and thanks to all the presenters today. 
You can nominate a featured teacher by filling out the form at tinyurl.com slash cr20li featured teacher nominate without the e at the end. Uh, you can also nominate yourself for the featured teacher of the month by filling out that form. You can complete the survey about today's show or any of the shows that you watch by completing the, the survey either in the chat box. You have the link for the survey there soon. Uh, the link for the survey to get to it directly is here. There's also a tab in Live Binder in the resources area. So on each month's Live Binder, you can find the survey. Once you get to the survey at the bottom, you can request a professional development certificate. Your name will be printed on it. One field is for your name, and the other is for the email address that you want it sent to. Please make sure that email is a personal email rather than a school email, because school email clients tend to block these from arriving to you. The video and audio collections are both available on iTunes U, as well as an RSS feed. And the full recordings are, are archived on the website. So there are many places get, to get to past Classroom 2.0 live shows. We want to thank our special guests today, Wes Fryer, Karen Fazenpar, Susan Van Gelder, Peggy George, Leslie, Leslie Prell Kean, and Carol Bruce. Our, uh, Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and Web 2.0 Labs Project to Weebly.com for providing our website, to everyone who participated in the today's show. Thank you so much for coming today.